Let's have some fun with these. Hello everyone, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we'd do a bit of a recycling and we are going to use kitchen towel rolls. You can use toilet paper rolls, it's up to you. And we're gonna make something like these. I have a few examples here, like little journaling cards or even specimen cards. And we're going to create texture like in these we're going to paint them do some stamping and then decorate them and these are just lovely addition to any journal have a look at i've done some with mushrooms and i've done some with birds I haven't done any with butterflies maybe we can do that today and then you know the parts that i cut out from here i decided to make little clusters little decorations they can even be turned into a hidden paper clips you know it's up to you what you do further but i just want to show you how i prepare these rolls and how i paint them and then it's up to you how you're going to cut them and use them at the end but i thought we'll just make a few of these together today and i hopefully give you some ideas on how you can recycle these and use them in your journals because it's a really great free resource here are the ones that i've prepared earlier i basically cut them open then I flattened them. These are the kitchen towel rolls and these are the toilet paper rolls. I prefer to use the kitchen towel rolls because it's a bigger surface but these can be used as well. Final project it just fits so they can be used as well. The first thing I want to show you how to get them nice and flat. Put a towel. I have my iron on hot with the steam. So I take one and I basically just cut it open. And I'll do the same for these, these ones. Okay. So now you need to spray them with water or you can spray them with something like this. This is hand disinfectant. I had these since the emergence of COVID. You know, you never know. And uh, it's great. You actually disinfect the paper, but you also get it wet just enough so that you can flatten them. Okay. But like I said, you can also use just plain water. Just make it a little bit wet. So your iron needs to be hot. And what you do now is just do this. You flatten them on both sides. And they are dry and flat immediately and disinfected. So you do the same with these, all right? You iron them on both sides with a hot iron, with the steam on, until they're nicely flat and dry. All right, so that's the part where you just flatten them out. And you can do a lot at the same time. Have them ready and then put them under a heavy book if you want to, you know, if you don't want to use them straight away. Just make sure you put them underneath something heavy so they don't curl up. But I don't think they will. I've had these for a few months now and they are okay. There are a few different ways of achieving texture. But today I will concentrate on just one of these ways. And it's to do with the embossing folders and a Sizzix Big Shot. This is what these embossing folders look like. They come in different sizes. It can be... Uh, these sizes and sometimes they also come like this okay and the reason i like to use this type of paper or cardstock with these is because this is kind of soft it's not as hard as the regular cardstock so it's much easier to emboss and plus these are glued in little pieces like you see the strips so there's two layers of the paper usually you can actually put them apart if you wanted to you see how they're kind of constructed you can take them apart and by embossing them you will reinforce them to stay in one piece you can emboss them and use them like this as well but today i'm not going to do that all right let's just pick one i think i want to use the rose okay so if you want to use this whole thing, you can do it in sections, like do half and then move and do another half. Or you can just 
cut it to size. I think I'm going to cut this one, which is easier. And when you use these, in your Sizzix, you have to take this one out. This is a thin die adapter and you don't need that one. So you just need your cutting plates and the main one. Put one plate down, you put the embossing folder with your paper and then you push everything through. Sometimes it doesn't go as easy, but it should be alright. Okay, and you can choose to go back and do it once more, but I think this is probably enough. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, I hope you can see this. Okay, so we have the parts that are raised on this side. That's the side with the color, usually with these. At least it is with the ones that I have. Let's do another one maybe. You see what's black here? If I want that to be raised and I want this to be on this side of the paper, I will put that up and this up. Because sometimes you have a nicer paper on one side than on the other. I hope it makes sense. Okay. Not that it matters all that much because we're going to paint over whatever side we want. So we'll do that. Okay. So another thing you can do as well is, is combine more than one of these. For example, if I take one of these small ones, I'll take this one and push this through here. And I want say a strip of this over the design that I've already done like this one here I can combine those two put that one where I want it perhaps like that and then run it through and I'll just make sure it's in line Now we have that design here and here, and we have through the middle, we have that one. Okay, we can do that as well. So let's do one and cover the whole thing. So I'm going to take one of the bigger ones, for example, this one. And which side looks better? Maybe this side looks better. So I'll have that one on top and that. Push it through. It's not that easy sometimes to work your muscles. Whew. All right, so now we have embossed that part, but not this part. So, what we do now, we just move this paper like that to that line and then we push it through the big shot again there we go so now we have the full page with this I text embossed. If we decide to turn these into something like specimen cards where we cut out areas like the circle here and the square here, we still have to paint them first. I prefer to do that. Paint them and then cut them and then whatever you cut you later on use as a little embellishment. So that was part of that. It means we're going to paint them first, let them dry and then we'll cut. 
it's just some scrap paper to protect the surface I'm working on and we can do that one with gesso we'll do this one with acrylics and we can do this one with distress paste now I'm not sure about other brands I've been using this one because it's available here in the shops it says distress paste by this company I don't know how to pronounce that name but that's what it looks like and it's a little bit like acrylic paint but it's much thinner and kind of spreads easily okay so I have the brown or coffee color I have this one which is vintage which is vintage cherry that one And I have this, it is pine green. It seems like acrylic paint, but it just spreads much easier, I think. So I'm just going to put all of these colors in some areas like this, because I, I don't want really uniform color. I want some you know, variety, so I'll put some green. something like that and then I'll just use dry brush to spread these out like that. I should have put my gloves on at least on one hand I'm just going to spread these so I go straight with this without the gesso and it worked all right. And I didn't add any water because I didn't want it too wet and then waiting forever for it to dry. You can certainly use lighter colors, but I like to start with the dark color and then use some uh, finger wax or gilding wax is on top like in gold silver and bronze to bring out the the texture and if you start with the light color it is a little bit more difficult to achieve that look so this is done i'll put it aside to dry and we'll work on another two if you don't have any of the distress paste you can use acrylic colors i have some darker blue here dark blue and some turquoise so i'm just going to go straight with the acrylic paint i won't bother with the gesso first really no need just get the paint Take the brush and just spread it again do not add any water because the whole thing might start to warp and it will take much longer to dry so I think this is okay to use without water you just spread that paint make sure it gets with all within all these um, crevices and you can use any color I like to use two different colors just to get some sort of interest you can use three colors too but you can also use just one color if that's what you want so I've decided to go with the blue on this one okay that is done as well and you know if you're doing a lot of these like a mess make it's much quicker you just do the flattening you do the embossing and then you do the painting let them dry and then leave them somewhere until you're ready to actually make something with those on this one i'm just going to use white gesso just go in straight with my brush and again no water just dry brush and spread really oh I should put the clean paper underneath 
you just want to spread this really well and like i said at the start there are other ways to achieve texture but today i'm just going to concentrate on these embossing folders but yeah there's certainly other ways to achieve we might cover that in another video Now we leave that one to dry and then we'll paint over it with some spray inks. While we're waiting for these to dry, I realized that this turned out much darker than it was the first time around, simply because I forgot to add one thing. So sorry about that. So I'll just do that quickly again. I've been adding glazing medium to these to make them lighter. Okay. And I'll just use one of these. Just need a palette of some sort. So glazing medium. This is glazing medium. Again by this company. And I just put a little bit. That's what it looks like. And then I take a little bit of this distress paste. And then it becomes much easier to spread and it's not as dark you can see that it is green now okay Let's add a little bit more yeah becomes a, a little bit lighter and a lot lot easier to spread The stress paste works really well if you add a little bit of glazing medium to it. If you don't, it's still going to be fine. But I actually like it with this better. Just do a couple more because I have some paint there left. I think the gesso is dry enough so that we can continue the work. Okay, and I kind of used spray inks, something like this, and then I added a little bit of um, gold gilding wax or finger wax on top, and I really like the result, and I want to try it on this texture. Okay, I don't have that many spray inks, use whatever colors you like or you have. I happen to have just these four colors. Okay, if you have some Tim Holtz spray inks, they would be perfect for this. So I have white, brown, I have this green color and magenta. Okay, so I think here I just want to use a bit of this green and brown. But I'm not going to spray because these bottles, when you, when you spray, it just gets everywhere. And I don't want to get mess everywhere on my desk so I'm just going to do this get a few drops and you can spray if you want I just don't want it on my clothes on my desk <laughs> so just like that and depending on if you want it dark or light you can add water to it okay I'll add some of this as well okay and I'm using a dry soft brush just to spread that down a bit first layer okay, and then I like to add mm, till I get it the right um, darkness I don't want it to, uh, too light but I'm just playing with it until I get it how I want it
can also do this. You can also spray water. This is just plain water. Get that. Maybe then move it around a little bit. See how the color mixes and travels in between those. I really love how this is starting to look. I have to hold it upright, but I understand that maybe then you don't see properly, but yeah. I need a little bit more dark color down the bottom here. really love how this is starting to look you can also use alcohol inks if you want it's up to you yeah as long as you add gesso because uh, when you use something like inks alcohol inks or anything that's kind of runny like this it will probably soak right into the cardstock unless you put gesso first all right so that is that is that one and i will leave it to completely dry before i do anything else to it i think this one is dry this one's dry too but I sort of want to work on that one and here we have those roses on the blue and let's use perhaps this old gold and you can use a few of them to have different that's bronze and that is silver and i'm using these in case you want it uh, they're the ones that I was able to buy here in the shop. So it's finger metallic paint in bronze, silver and old gold by this company, Art Depro. Okay. But you can use any gilding wax or finger wax that you have. Just use whatever you have. It doesn't have to be the same brand. It really doesn't. Let's start with the silver. Oh, I love it already. So you just... Put a little bit on your finger and then you rub it in. Let's do some of this. Oh, I love it. Looks really beautiful with this blue color. Let's get some of this bronze. And really these finger waxes like last forever i've had these for like three years now and i use them a lot but you only need a little bit and it goes a long way it really does i love what it looks like maybe a little bit more silver but yeah you have to go slowly with this because once you put too much it's kind of kind of hard to take it off like I did here. Build it up a little by little. Until you're happy with the result. I think that's probably plenty. I love what it looks like. Really do. Okay, well, it's the same with this one. Let's see if that's dry. It is. Again, the same thing, you know. Wait till it's dry and then play with your finger waxes and you know you can make a lot of these and just leave them until you're ready to use them or cut them up or, you know you can make tags you can make specimen cards you can make journaling cards you can use them on top of journal covers you can you know cut out even charms from these yeah Like we did those charms with recycled packaging, those little tag shapes. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave it 
in the description box below so you can check it out. Oh, I love that one. Let's get some of this. It looks like metal now. So, who would think it came to this from this? I love it. Okay, so we have that one done as well. This was I'm not dry yet. You can keep adding more color to have it darker. You can have it lighter. It's up to you. But I kind of like it as it is. We'll see if it if it's going to change more once it's completely dry. Uh, we also have these. These were done with uh, that uh, distress paste with added glazing medium, and maybe these leaves would look good with some with some gold. What do you think? Let's add some gold. If you see that some of these are lifting off, just grab your glue. Just grab your glue and glue it down. Okay, that one is done. Now maybe here we can do, let's do the bronze one. This is much easier to do without gloves, but um, I really don't want to get it on my hands. Maybe if I add a little bit of silver here, maybe here as well. Okay, these are all dry and I love how they look. I love this one. I thought it was going to be dark, but once we added that gold on top, it looked really good. These two as well. And the blue one that we've done with acrylic paint is just really pretty as well. Now, this one has dried. And now it looks a little bit lighter than it was when it was wet. Now, I want to add a bit of that paste as well, or gilding wax. The silver would look good on this. Yes, it does. So this one was done with gesso and some spray inks. Oh, that looks really really nice i love this one too so yeah the choice is yours you can use acrylics you can use gesso and spray inks or you can use if you have any of these distress pastes and just finish all of them with some of the finger wax or gilding wax paste all right now you have to decide what you're going to make with these i thought we'll make some specimen cards like i've done here I will also cut them in this shape but I do that at the end first I like to cut the opening and you'll see why in a minute and for the opening I use either the square ones the round ones or oval ones and we'll just make a, a few of each for this part you will need your standard platform your thin die adapter and two of the cutting plates you place one cutting plate on top of those two you place your paper and position this where you want it i want this to be at the bottom so i'm going to put that there i love how this one turned out i'm going to move it a little bit here to the side because there is no embossing on this part so think like that you can also secure these with some um, washi tape or something if you think they're gonna move and you can go once twice three times if you think that the first time the cut didn't really go through but I think it went through I know that this one doesn't cut all the way here in this corner every time the same spot so I just pulled it out and I'm gonna keep these as well so that is one so we'll have the square one there now with the rows I think I want to have the oval and I'll place this on top Alright. Oh, it went right out. I 
and even that is really cute just on its own it doesn't matter that it has the line here i don't mind it i actually like it all right so we have that one with the big one i need to cut one section now here maybe we can do the circle Another one at the back and you'll almost have like a little charm or something a little round tag i love that one let's do another circle one Cut that. nice and we have this one we do it like this so we can do that let's do that and have that almost like a pocket of some sort. So we'll do that. Put it in the middle. Yeah, we can experiment with this. This is just a suggestion. But it's up to you what you do with it. Okay. We have that one. And there's this left have the square one so we'll have two of each you can have any shape here you can have little parts or you know, even butterfly shapes why not flower shapes it's totally up to you and i'll probably have this piece left but that is all right. I will just trim. Okay. So that is it with cutting the window shapes. And we'll need the scissors again to cut the final shape. All right. So we have to decide what sort of paper we want here at the back. I have some of my dyed papers. I have some left from earlier that are actually green. I think these green ones would look really nice here. And that one as well. And then I can have this one. So this is just like a light brown. All right, and I will use for the other ones, I will use the blue one. So, I've been doing this. Just fold once and then fold again. And then I just cut here. Okay. So I'm not really precise or anything because I'm going to cut this on my Sizzix at the end. Anyway. And these blue papers were dyed with blueberries. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave the link down below as well. Okay, so that is it. So we're going to do that. So the next thing I do is basically glue these together. I'm going to use glue stick. And put it onto this. So I cover most of the surface with glue stick. But then I go with uh, this white glue around the edges. Maybe just a little bit there. Okay. And you decide what you want to be where. Like, you can make this see-through as well if you wanted to with some acetate, but this is slightly different specimen card. We're going to be stamping inside here. And I will repeat the same process with all of these. I even have to speed it up a little bit so this video doesn't last for hours. All right. 
let's just glue that okay they're all nice and glued now we can start stamping the images that we want on the inside and i've done birds and i've done mushrooms and i thought maybe it would be nice to have some butterflies i've got my stamping platform here and i absolutely love this tool i got it online from an australian shop last summer I had it delivered here by my friends who were visiting and i just really love this i used to buy silicon stamps but never used them because i could never get it right but with this you get a perfect stamp every time saying that i hope i won't mess up this one now and i recently got some really nice butterfly stamps and which one can we have here maybe this one would look nice these stamps have these the numbers like figure and a number maybe i can do that i think have it there or here at the top maybe there something like that all right now we close it and then okay we add ink i'm just using archival ink black soup I'll move it. Nice. I love it. It's really pretty. I just love that texture. Just so yummy. Okay, let's have the next one. What about the blue one? Okay. These are magnets that are holding it in place. In case you're wondering. A really big one like that one okay that one for sure and let's do a different number all right ink all right but i want the butterfly to be a little bit more black nice love it really really nice okay now we have this green one i want them all to be different maybe this Okay, and a different number. Oh, that's pretty, that one. good now sometimes if it's good and you do it again it just you end up destroying it so it's best to just take it away if it looks all right after the first attempt all right another one we say we're gonna use that one like a pocket almost in a journal something like this so in that case we can have this butterfly or this one Mm. I want this one. Let's have the number. Just like that. Needs a little bit more. 
don't want a pale print, you know, we just want it to be really clear. I love it. Okay. This one. And we have this one. So maybe we can have that one there and we'll have this one here. Okay. I want them all to be different butterflies. Maybe I'm overdoing it, but I think my ink pad is kind of lost. It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's not dry, but it's not like it was when it was new. So that's why I have to do everything twice. Okay, uh, let's have this number here. Number two, figure two. Pretty girl and new towel. If you don't want to stamp, you can also draw little pictures. Okay, so that is done. I'll put this aside. Now we have our butterfly specimen cards. Now let's cut them up into the shape we want. I'm going to use this die. It doesn't have to be this one. You can use any kind of rectangular shape that you have. I think I bought it online, but I'm not 100% sure. I can't really tell you exactly where to go and get it. Okay, so we're going to place this so that our circle is approximately in the middle something like that and just place this over and cut so once that way and I return it back and I'll go once more I know that this die is not that sharp anymore. I guess I've used it a lot. Okay, let's see if it worked. It seems like it did in some areas, but it didn't here. I'll just try it on this side. here and here it didn't go through. I also have this metal adapter that I recently got from AliExpress and sometimes it helps. it did help okay. perhaps my glue is not dry enough if you attempt to cut this while your glue is still kind of fresh or wet will be difficult for it to cut it needs to be dry but look at it i absolutely love it who would have thought that this comes from a recycled cardstock or paper rolls kitchen towel rolls toilet paper rolls and you can journal on the back you can even turn it into a tag just um, put a little hole here 
and decorate the bottom bit as well but even if we leave it just like this i think it looks good okay let's cut the rest of them that's awesome would make a really cute pocket in a journal I love this one. And lucky last. Really pretty as well. Okay, we're done with cutting. They look great as they are, but I just want to add a little something to the bottom here, maybe here. I don't know about this one. Maybe I will leave it as it is. Kind of like it just the way it is, and perhaps this one as well. But let's decorate these okay and we'll leave these as they are okay now what do i have here i've been i've been using some of my dyed papers you know the paper sometimes when you dye papers you end up with a few that you're not that happy with but they're actually great if you want to stamp some labels or some tickets on top of them they just look really good on these grungy not good looking papers <laughs> So I've been doing that. Okay, let's just glue these down. So that is those. Now, what else can we add there? Let's have a look. Got some of these tickets. I don't know. Got my little watercolors. Mm. There we go happy with that so i'll just quickly glue this together and then we'll take a final look Ta-da! All glued down and ready to be used in journals. I absolutely love them. If I want to add to my existing collection of birds, I am very happy with this. It's just, you know, a lot of fun creating those textures and then stamping and then cutting and getting to use my Sizzix and I also love these little clusters. I intend to make the same with these that we cut earlier. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you some ideas and lots of inspiration on how to recycle those paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls and how to turn them into something really beautiful for your journals. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.